Hi everyone, Jenny here. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. I have spent the last 30 years working with polymer clay and for most of that time, I have been making canes, which I take slices off of to make into beads, to make into jewelry, to sell at mainly quilt shows. Um, I've done other shows and, and different designs along the way, but the quilt shows have been my main focus. Of course, in 25 to 30 years of doing canes, I've had some that have been failures for whatever reason, either the color was wrong, the design was wrong, the customers didn't like it, whatever. And uh, so I've had these canes sitting here because I was going to use them as backstock, but they didn't sell, so I haven't needed to use them. And this particular cane is probably 15 years old, maybe more, and it's rock hard. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to rejuvenate or reclaim this clay and make it into a new color. I am going, I did a test and if I blend this all together, it turns into this kind of a nice soft gray color. So I will be chopping this up in my food processor, blending it through my pasta machine to get it all blended together and make a brand new color out of it. And I will show you the different stages I go through. Um, the first state step is to use my tools or describe my tools here. Today, the materials I'm going to be using are my old cane, Cernet Magic Mix and Cernet Soft Mix. Um, in the past, I have used uh, Fimo Mix Quick which I am out of stock of, so I can't show it to you. And I've also used Sculpey Clay Softener, which used to be called Diluent. They all pretty much work the same. Some are better than, I can't say that some are better than others. They just, they work basically the same. I do not use mineral oil or Vaseline or any other kinds of oils. I don't feel that they are compatible with the clay over time. And um, so I just don't use them. I'd rather use clay specific products to soften my clay. So because these canes are so old, they are hard. And the reason they get hard is more than I can explain. Um, and I don't do a very good job of it because I don't really quite understand it. I just know what happens. Ginger from the blue, blue bottle tree has written a really nice just ex explanation about why clay gets hard over time. And I'm going to put a link to that in the description. Um, check, check that out. The tools I'm going to use are my food processor and my pasta machine. My food processor, let's talk about that. This food processor is from the 70s. I have been using it since I started working with polymer clay 30 years ago. Um, I like it so much that when my mother-in-law passed away about 15 years ago, I inherited hers and I have it as backup. Um, recently, I had the opportunity, well, I had gone away for a couple months down south where it was warmer for the winter. And while down there, I picked up a newer food processor at a, a flea market, uh, thrift store and I used it while I was down there. Um, I believe that the material that there was used for the bowl in the 70s and the material that's used for the bowl today is different because after about two months worth of use on that newer food processor, this bowl was all etched. Um, it was like the plasticizers in the clay or something in the clay corroded the edge of the pasta machine bowl and I could see where if I had been using it long term I would have had to replace it. This bowl I have never replaced. It's I've been using it so it's, it's dirty right now but I can clean that up and it's just uh, just fine. Um, yes it has a crack in the bottom and I still have my mother-in-law's backup down the basement so when it gets worse I guess I will 
look at um, replacing the bowl at the point at this point it's not bothering anything it worked, it's just fine after I'm done working when I want to clean this what I will do is I use what is called a waterless hand cleaner this is citrus orange by max it's basically the Napa version of fast orange smooth and the smooth is the important part you can see here it says smooth Personally, I like Fast Orange better than this one. I thought I would try it. It works. It's not my favorite. Um, what I'll do is I'll just squirt some in there all around, rub it on, let it sit for a little while, and take, I use uh, just plain white dish towels I buy at the store and wipe it out. Then I wash the towel and reuse it. Um, I've been doing this for years. It cleans up the clay just fine, and I like it to clean the clay up off my hands, too. So that's the first tool I will be using is my food processor. It's General Electric. Like I said, it's from the 70s. It's a workhorse. I love my food processor. The next tool I will be using is my pasta machine. This is an Atlas 150 pasta machine. Um, I've taken the fenders off. I had it uh, Mona size. So I sent it off to Mona Kissel and her husband adapted it by putting this, by replacing these little uh, scrapers on the bottom with, with a knob here. So I can unscrew this, take this off, clean it, put it back together and it takes me less than five minutes to clean my blades. Um, I do have a motor on it. Face it, I'm spoiled. I'm so paranoid that my motor's going to die. I have a second as backup. And I leave this on. I don't use it. Sometimes I will store some of my tools on it just to get them off my table. Um, I use it more as ballast because I like my pasta machine in front of me. I don't want it clamped on the side. I, I like it in front of me. For me, that's the easiest way to use it. Um, I'll put a link to Mona Kissel's uh, website in the comments below, in the description below. The first step to reclaiming this is I am going to take my canes. Now I have, this, there's a lot to this cane. There's actually three pounds of cane in this tub that I'm going to be conditioning up into new clay. Um, I won't be doing it all at once just because it's too much for the, pasta, uh, the food processor to handle, but I will use it, I don't know, about, about that much at a time and uh, then do a second batch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unwrap these. So I have them wrapped in the glad wrap then I'm going to cut this apart using a tissue blade. Just I'm just going to chop it up, cut it into I don't know, chunks about the size of my thumbnail, and put it in my food processor, processor bowl. Once I have this all chopped and put into the food processor, processor bowl, I will start processing it. So here's my bowl. All my canes are all chopped up in there. You can see that it's approximately a third to half full. Don't want it too full because then the um, the blade heats up and it, it just has a hard time circulating all the the cane or the clay around and prop and distributing all the uh, colors and everything in there. So I'm going to put this onto my my machine my part and I'm going to go through the process it from for the first stage okay this is what I call stage one so I've processed it I have not added any softening agents to it yet um, this is female classic it's about 15 years old and you can see it's chopped up into what I looks like big chunks of sand 
Now these are si sort of warm and you can see that they're already sticking together. Now, sometimes they don't stick together at this stage and that's when I would start adding a little, little bit of clay softener, a drop or two at a time. But right now, I don't think this needs it. And if you add too much clay softener, then your clay will get sticky. So the first stage has been chopped up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these out of here and I'm going to compress them into, into balls. And I, I'm not doing anything basically real particular about it. I'm just compressing it all together into a balls. And what I'm going to do after these are all, uh, after this is all compressed, is I'm going to cut it up again and put it back into the food processor and process it a second time. Um, I want to do this in stages because if you let the blades run too long, they can heat up and they can actually start baking your clay and you get up, you ended up with baked chunks in your nice reconstituted clay. Um, sometimes the clay will stick to the bottom along the edges and the corners and you have to watch out for that. A little bit is okay, but if it gets too, too thick across here, the blade will actually start again to heat it up and bake it as it's chopping it. And we don't want that to happen. Not when we're going through all this work to reconstitute our colors. So I'm compressing this into a log or a roll, whatever you want to call it. I'm not real particular. If there's a few left in there, that's fine. It'll all come out on the end. So now that these are compressed together, I'm going to chop it up again. Just cut it up with a knife into chunks. And then I'm going to run it through my food processor a second time. Now, when I was talking about the bowls getting etched, I think there might be something in the clay, or yeah, it must be in the clay, that um, is incompatible with the new plastic, at least on the one I was using. Um, so once you're done, you want to clean up your clay out of your bowl as soon as possible. With this one, with this bowl and this old uh, food processor, it hasn't been an issue. But on that new one, I ended up, it was just a, something I picked up at a thrift store for 10 bucks. Didn't want to haul it home because I didn't have enough space, so I ended up just tossing it. Um, I donated the motor back to the thrift store the thrift store but I tossed the bowl because it was really itched and it could have been because I cleaned it with the wrong materials um, maybe I let the clay sit in there too long I don't know but um, it wasn't retrievable and I didn't want anybody to accidentally use it for food so I donated the motor back and tossed the bowl now I'm going to continue to cut these up into chunks and then I'm going to process it again, and I will get back to you when that step is done. Okay, so this is what it looks like after run number two through the food processor. It's kind of looking like monkey colored cottage cheese. It's warm, it's pliable. This is the point where I would decide if I need to add more clay softener. And that's something that's hard to describe. I, I do it by feel. Does this feel like it's going to stay soft and pliable? Or does this feel like it's going to fall apart and be hard to work with? Um, I have done a number of old canes this week. And this is the first one I don't think I need to add a lot of clay softener to. Um, what I will do is, I think I do need a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of Cernit, uh, Cernit Soft Mix. And by a little bit, I mean maybe this much. And I'm also going to put in just a couple drops of Magic Mix. I could, 
like I mentioned before, you don't want to put too much in because then it gets goopy. Now I do have more of this cane to process. So if this batch ended up too goopy, I could add some of that old cane back into it and it, it would even out. Um, but I just put a few drops of the magic mix in there and the Cernit soft mix and I'm going to process it again real quick. Let me cut this one up and then we'll see how it looks. So we, here we are after run number three through the food processor and this is processed as much as I'm going to process it. My next step now is to take take it out of here and I'm going to, it's warm, it's soft, it's pliable. I'm going to flatten it into a pancake and run these through my pasta machine, starting on the thickest setting moving down to probably about number four is where I usually end up and until it's all blended into a solid color and I will just keep I will do this in batches and once the batches are done then I'm going to stack this all together into a block and I will have a new color to work into my canes for 2023. I have probably 20 to 30 pounds of clay, old clay, that is hard, rock hard and crumbly and uh, needs something to do with it. It's sitting in a drawer. It's been there for 15, 20 years, and it's time to clean some of that out and put it to use. So I'm going to work on this, run it through my pasta machine. And when it's done, I will come back to you and show you the final product. Here we have an example of what I was talking about when I mentioned the clay sticking along the edges. This isn't too bad. Um, if it had been gone farther down, like in this area, that's when we have to worry about the blades getting hot and baking the clay. Now, one of the tricks I use to get the clay out of the bowl at this point is an old card. This one happens to be from a hotel that I forgot to return the key card for. And I just, I use that as a scraper to scrape the clay out of the, the bowl, off the sides and off the bottom. And I have a few of these, so if it gets used up or ragged, I throw it away and use another one. I've always got old cards around from something or other. Sometimes they even come in the mail trying to get me to get new credit cards. And I'm gonna dump this out, push, press it into, logs or rolls, cut it up, and process it again. I had filled my bowl a little too full this time, so I'll probably keep one of these logs out when I reprocess it. So here we are. That entire cane has been chopped and processed through the pasta machine and blended all into a new color. It's kind of a nice gray. I have to figure out what I'm going to make with that. In the meantime, I'm going to wrap it in Glad Wrap. I prefer Glad Wrap over deli paper just, just because I like it. It's my wrapping of choice. I know a lot of people like deli paper. I prefer Glad Wrap. Um, I have three pounds and three ounces of clay here, which has now been rejuvenated and recolored and recovered. Um, I'm going to clean up my 
food processor. I'll show you a little bit of that. One of the things that I need to point out is because of the way this came out of my bowl for my food processor, I know this clay was Fimo. And it was probably Fimo before they made Fimo Classic because this bowl came out really clean. Yeah, there's clay up here around the edge and stuff, but there's very little clay stuck to the sides. And that doesn't happen with the new Fimos, with Fimo Professional and some of the other Cato clays and some of those, they stick to the side. This came out really clean. I like Fimo Classic and the old Fimo before they had to change the formulas. So I'm going to clean this. Take this out. And I'm back to using the citrus orange hand cleaner, the smooth lotion. I do not want the pumice in there. And basically what I'm going to do here is just sprinkle a little bit of that in the bottom of the bowl. Just using my hand, I'm gonna rub it around. And this dissolves the clay. I use this to, I don't wash my hands in between colors and stuff. I use this waterless hand cleaner. And I also don't use paper towels or handy wipes or baby wipes or any of those. I like the waterless hand cleaner and a cotton towel that I can throw in my washing machine and wash up and use again and again. It keeps my uh, garbage, my trash. I have less trash. And where I live, I pay dearly for every bag of trash that I have. I live way out in the country. They only come once a month and they charge exorbitant prices to empty our, our dumpster. And I prefer not to do that if I don't have to. So I use white cotton towels. They don't stay white very long, trust me. And um, I use it to clean up my hands with the waterless hand cleaner. And I'm going to just wipe out this bowl. And it dissolves all the color, all the clay off the inside of the bowl. Takes it off. Yes, my towel gets stained. It still works. Who cares what it looks like? Wipe off the outside. And I'll do the same. Here's the blades. Wipe them off. Doesn't take much. This is one of the reasons I like the old Fimo because it really cleans up nice. And I'll do the same with the lid, but I'm going to... Um, Take a dry portion of the towel here and dry this one off first. There we go. There, all clean, ready for the next batch of clay to get processed. And this hand cleaner doesn't seem to leave behind any kind of residue. And it's non-alcohol. I don't believe it has alcohol in it. Um, you have to be careful with plastics. Rubbing alcohol is great to clean up polymer clay, but it can uh, deteriorate some of the plastics when it when you're cleaning it up. So I use rubbing alcohol. Whoa, sorry. I hit the camera. I use rubbing alcohol occasionally and very sparingly. Um, I use the hand cleaner for most of this. So I'm going to clean this up and wrap my, wrap the clay in, in a glad wrap and call it a day. Um, I should point out in the last week, I have, I don't know if you can see this. Oh, I can't bend it. I have processed almost 30, 30 pounds of clay using this method. And I know I have at least that much more to go. Um, this is going to be the next batch. And I did a test. This is leftovers from a cane I did a few years ago. I did a test and it turns into this kind of a nice emerald green. 
So it'll be, that's my next project. A little bit about my pasta machine. So I mentioned earlier that this is an Atlas 150 and that it's been Mona sized and I have a motor attached. Um, so I'm going to take the motor off and I'm also gonna, I use this for weight. I'm gonna take that off and I'm going to clip it on its side. Now, Mona sized means that the scraper blades have been removed. They've added a little leg here with this nut. So I can take this off, pull that out. And this doesn't have very much clay on it, but now I can just wipe that off and clean it up. Um, I know that's the first question that people want to always ask me, what's a Mona sized pasta machine? The second question that I know people are going to ask is, why do I use the Atlas 150 and not the 180 or the Lucy clay machine or any of the other bigger ones? And the answer to that is I have. I have gone through a couple of the Atlas 180s. I have gone through the Macon's, the big Macon's pasta machine. Um, I even have a dream machine from Artway, which I absolutely love, but I always come back to this one. And one of the reasons is because the Atlas 150 is smaller. When I use the bigger machines, it, of course, I use more clay. And uh, using more clay and having bigger Skinner blends and sheets isn't always a good thing. I have, I can use more clay, I can condition more clay, I can make bigger Skinner blends, use them in my canes, which means I end up with bigger canes. And you saw what happens to a cane if my customers don't like it. It sits in my drawer for 15 years and I end up turning it into a new color. Um, that's not necessary. I, I, one of my goals this year is, is to make smaller canes so I don't run into that problem. If it's a design that I know I sell, there's a couple designs that I make that every time I turn around, I'm out and I have to remake it. Those I will make large. So I have them in my inventory and I don't have to remake them all the time. But for the most part, I don't need to make my canes quite as big as I have been. Um, if they sell out, they sell out. I'd come up with a new design. There, I clean off the clay on that one. This is how easy that the Atlas is, a Mona sized Atlas is to clean. That, I got those blades all cleaned up now. Put this one back on. And my pasta machine is ready for the next batch. Oop, I messed that one up. Okay, hint. When you're putting the blade, the scraper blades back on, make sure you get back over the screw and not in front of it. Come on, get in there. There we go. Just a little happens. There we go. There, now I'll put my motor back on. And my seat, if I don't have the motor, it tips forward. And it, lot, some people use it that way. I don't like it. I like it sit like that. And now I can push that back on my table and I'll clean up these scraps. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, I will put the links in the description, like I said, the link for Ginger from the Blue Bottle Trees, uh, description about why polymer clay gets hard, and the link for the Mona-sized, uh, pasta machine, and the link for my website. Um, I think that's it. If you, if there's anything else, just let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye.